Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can manage and restore backups in Azure SQL databases. I'm going to talk about these four main methods that we can use for restoring backups. Point in time recovery method lets you go back in time and take that version of the database and restore in the system. Azure by default sets this time as seven days, but you can have uh, this time set up to 35 days. That means you can go back in time for 35 days, up to 35 days and restore the backup. Long-term retention backups lets you store your backup in the system up to 10 years. You can either have weekly backups, monthly backups, or annual backups. You can also restore a deleted database. If you delete a database and if it's in point in time retention period, then you can restore that database in the system. You can also restore a uh, database from your storage account. You can export uh, your existing database at any time and put it in storage account. And then you, while creating a new database, or you can also import the backup in your server using import command. So let's check out um, check out these methods and see how we can if we can try this out and uh, restore our database. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my Azure portal and I'm gonna go to my server SQL Server and click on SQL database. So currently I only have one database but i want to try out all the backups and see if i can uh, create new backups and use those backups for testing purpose right so i'm going to click on my backup which is the only backup bookstores production backup and i want to restore a backup of this database so i'm going to click on restore here and here it will give me option to uh, select either point in time or long time retention i'm going to select point in time and uh, the earliest point to restore it says May 2nd. And today is May 9th. You can see that today is May 9th. And the reason why it's saying uh, May 2nd is because I have by default, Azure has set up my point in time retention period as seven days. That means I can go back in time for seven days and take that version of the database and uh, you know create a new database as backup so i'm gonna select i want to go back in time up to may 4th and take that backup and restore in my system so i'm gonna select that period and then name my backup as um point in time recovery and then you can select the elastic pools if you have you can select the pricing tier for the database that you're creating of that version uh, i'm gonna you know keep the same and click on ok once i click on ok then azure will create a new database and restore um, that database into that new database uh, but it will take the backup of it will take the version of may 4th and keep it in the database the new database that it's creating so that's how um point in time recovery works but like I said, you can configure the period. That means you can go to your SQL Server and click on Manage Backups. And then you can change the period. You can see the point in time recovery backup is set to seven days, but you can have it up to 35 days. So if I select the backup, if I select the database and click on Configure Retention, then you can change the days. You can change the point in time restore configuration up to 35 days. That means you can go back in time up to 35 days. Okay. Let's talk about long-term retention configurations. Long-term retention, like I said, you can have these backups up to 10 years if you set it up properly. You can either have weekly backups, monthly backups, and yearly backups. If you select weekly backup, you have to tell them that how long do you want to keep this backup in the system? I've selected as 10 weeks. That means the weekly backup which is getting created will stay in my storage account on my server for um, uh, uh, for 10, 10 weeks. I can also select uh, monthly backups and select the weeks. How, how long do I want to keep these monthly backups in the system? 
I can also select yearly backups, but I'll have to select which week of the year that I want to take backup and how long do I want to keep that backup in the system. You can have this up to 10 years. Okay. So let's go ahead and restore a long time retention backup. For doing that, I'm not, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my manage backups and click on available long term retention backups. And here I'm going to select bookstore, uh, uh, bookstore production. And you can see that it took some backups on weekly basis. One backup was taken on April 29th and then another backup was taken week after, which was on May 6th. I want to restore this backup, the 29th April backup. So I'm going to click on this backup and it will ask me what name do you want to give and where do you want to, um, this thing, this thing is locked, but you can select the name of your database. So I'm gonna set the name as, um, long term retention backup because that, that's what we are doing and apply. Okay, so after clicking on apply, it'll start a restore process of long term retention. And this will take some time, but it will uh, take this backup, it will take the backup which was taken on April 29th and create a new database of this version. Okay, let's talk about deleted backups. So if I go to my if I go to my SQL server and click on deleted backups, you can see that I have so many deleted backups, but I want to select a backup which was created on May 3rd. It was created on May 3rd and was also deleted on May 3rd. But you can select the deleted backups too if it's there in your point in time recovery retention period, and then you can uh, restore that backup in the system. So I'm gonna I'm going to select that backup, which was taken on May 3rd. And then I'm going to name it as a uh, deleted backup. Okay. Once I click on OK, then it will, um, it will create, it will start the process of restoring that backup in my system. Okay. The last uh, method that I want to talk about is explicit backup, which is you can go to your uh, SQL server, select the database that you want to take backup of. And the, the backups that we discussed, they were either uh, long term retention or point in time recovery, or they were either deleted backups. But you, if you want to explicitly take backup and import that database, you can also do that using storage account. You're going to need a storage account and you'll have to create a container in your storage account for exporting this backup. What you can do is after creating the storage account, you can come back to your database and click on export here. And then you can, um, you know, take this backup and uh, you can, uh, this will create a backup file and put it in your storage account. So I'm going to name this as um, storage account and um, it will, you know, um, put a date and time um, for the file, that's fine. And then you can uh, select the uh, select the storage um, where you want to put this backup into. I'm going to select this book storage account that I've created. And then I'm going to select the container where I would like to put this backup into. Um, and then you can create a password for your backup, the backup file that you're creating. I'm going to use the same password. After entering the password, I'm going to click on OK, and this will start the export process. So it will take the backup that you, uh, it will take the uh, current, um, uh, it will take the current database, and uh, it will start the export process of uh, of the current database, and it will create a backup file into my storage unit, storage account, not storage unit. Sorry. So if I go to my SQL Server and go to um, not SQL Server, if I go to my storage account and then if I go to my container and click on my container, you can see that it created a backup file. It says zero bytes right now because the, um, you know, the process has been submitted, uh, but it created a backup file in my storage account and I can use this backup file uh, to import the database into the system. 
what I'm going to do is, so if I want this uh, backup, if I want uh, um, this version of the backup and create a database, what I can do is I can go to my uh, SQL Server and uh, use this import database. And then I can select the, the backups that I've taken. So this is the backup, which is which is a valid backup because it's, you know, the backup has already been taken. So I'm going to select this backup uh, that I've already taken in the past, which is in the storage account and then select it. And then I can, you know, um, I'll, I'll have to use the same password that I used for creating. So I'm going to use the same password and click on OK. And that will start the process of importing that backup onto my server. OK. These processes take some time, so I'm going to pause the video here and come back to it once uh, these processes are done. And then I'm going to connect connect to my uh, management studio and show you how they look like. OK. OK, so you can see that all the processes are done. It created the database using restore. It created a uh, deleted database, you know, the import database request which was submitted that is complete. Um, long time restore is complete too. So if I go to uh, my server and click on SQL databases, you can see that it created all the databases from the backups. One is point in time recovery, another is long term recovery long-term retention backup other is deleted and one we did it from storage account okay you can also go to your import export history to check out um you know how many backups that you are um that you're imported and exported and you can see the progress too okay so um you can also connect to you uh you know your server uh, like we did it in the last episode and check out if you know all the databases that you have created from the backups can see or not so you don't really have to work on your production to reproduce issues you can use these backups to reproduce issues from the past okay so that's how you can work with backups you can manage backups and restore backups in your system and use those backups for testing purpose that's all about uh, taking backups if you have any questions you can reach out to me on twitter or facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.